their brothers and sisters in Christ, he would explain everything to them when they were alone. One of the most powerful and moving films I have ever seen is the depiction of the Carthusian monks in the Grand Chartreuse Monastery in France called Integrate Silence. A documentary, you could say, which tells the story of the religious who simply live in the mountains in the south of France. Their day is largely uneventful, but what the documentary highlighted was their sense of peace, calm and stillness. This movie has no plot, no dramatic ending, no main character, nothing to say, no moral line at the end, but rather simply tells the story of the day-to-day -day activities of the monks who live in the monastery. What does come forth and what is shown is a gratitude for each and every single day. The movie has nothing to say except depict those who are gathered in the world, yet they are day in and day out praying away in their cells on their own in solitude only to come together on Sunday for the celebration of the Eucharist. And yet that is often the story of the grace of God quietly working and reaping the harvest, bringing forth grace in the lives of believers who simply remain faithful to the God whom they love and worship. And so very often when we reflect on a particular situation which has caused us pain or trouble in life, it's only upon reflection, looking back that we are often able to see the hand of God there guiding and directing us through some of the most painful and difficult times and moments of life. In the first reading we have the beautiful proclamation from Ezekiel that he is going to create a place of refuge and safety for all God's creatures. For the early church, the Israelites, this typical proclamation normally referred to some form of politics, a new political type or dynasty that they were longing to discover. The prophet Ezekiel, however, is referring to something so very different. He is reminding the people of God's faithfulness that on a mountain, biblical language for prayer and deep intimacy with God, that the tree will be a place of safety, a place of refuge, where they will come and discover that in their pained and troubled world, a world full of anxiety and fear, they will have a home where all will be safe. And for us, we know this home is discipleship. In that place, in that place of refuge, the soul discovers a rock, a refuge, where they will find no wrong. And there is, you might say, a confidence that comes from a relationship with God that answers the deeper, more fundamental questions, questions of our human existence. When you talk to your grandparents, say they will often quote paragraphs from the old school catechism, which might so often be today ridiculed as a relic from the past, but often was so rich in wisdom. And there we were made for God, for loving and serving him. We were made for happiness. We were made for joy. Often understood in some form of a dictatorship, but rather is more of an invitation to love and faithfulness. Our relationship with the Father who loves us and cares for us so tenderly, and who, as we discover in the gospel, is always at work in the hearts of his faithful children. At work in the very same way a gardener plants a seed, we should be struck by the patience of the gardener. We are told by our blessed Lord that we so often appears insignificant, often with the grace of God grows into a living image of his kingdom here and now. But that is the essence of what it means to be faithful, to have that same confidence and trust in God that our blessed Lord urged Peter to have when he met him on the waters. In John Paul display when he forgave the man who tried to kill him. The faith that endures through life is often something we overlook, but always there in the quiet of every single day, sustaining us and helping us to come closer to the God who loves us. And when we are alone, when we are isolated in the bits and pieces of every day, we should pause and pay attention. For the Holy Spirit is working in the relationships, the friendships, all the moments of faithful service that we have every single day. We pray for the inspiration and the grace to remain faithful in these hard and difficult times so we too can proclaim the gospel of love and mercy to the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.